So, Dr. Gardner, frequently in, the, in, in our pancreatic disease center, in our clinics, we see a lot of patients with chronic pancreatitis. When do you start to suspect that your patients may have exocrine pancreatic insufficiency? What type of test do you do to look for this condition? Great question. So exocrine pancreatic insufficiency is where the pancreas is not making enough of its enzymes to digest food. And because of that, the patient is not absorbing all the nutrients and vitamins that they need. So that's exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. And what we typically say is that the pancreas needs to be fairly significantly damaged before that occurs. At least that was the old thinking that, for example, 95% of the pancreas shouldn't be working before symptoms will develop that patients will develop this problem. We know now that it probably occurs much more frequently uh, than previously thought. The classic symptom patients have with exocrine pancreatic insufficiency is diarrhea, voluminous diarrhea. And what they will often tell me is that they see fat in their stool. So they see an orange color, the stool floats, it's difficult to flush. These are kind of the classic symptoms of exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. And when we see that, that generally means the pancreas is fairly far along with disease and the patients are having a hard time gaining weight. They may be suffering problems such as fractures because they're not absorbing enough calcium. And these are the things that we see with kind of far along pancreatic, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. However, as I said, we know more now that patients can start developing problems even earlier and they're not necessarily having symptoms. So what we see is that maybe patients aren't getting enough calcium or they're not getting enough vitamin D early on in the process. And that can set them up for long-term problems such as fractures and problems with their bone health. So to reiterate, exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, the symptoms generally are those of malabsorption, inability to gain weight, frequent diarrhea, but we can sometimes see symptoms or even not see symptoms years before they develop this. So it's really important to recognize. How do we diagnose it? Well, the classic way to diagnose it is to actually measure the amount of fat in the stool. And so we can do that for a variety of different ways, collecting the fat, there's various tests we can do uh, to determine whether or not they have problems with how they're absorbing the fat in their stool. But sometimes, as I said, that, that can occur late in the game. So you wanna try to catch patients earlier with exocrine pancreas insufficiency. So now we're doing more fancy tests where we actually stimulate the pancreas and see its response and collect the juice that comes out of the pancreas. And that can allow us to diagnose this much earlier. We also can check vitamin levels in the blood and see if those are low. And we can say, okay, well, this is probably due to the, uh, the pancreatic insufficiency. Oh, I agree also. And something that, that, that I find frequently in my clinic, it's the significant other telling me that you know, they can see that their wife, husband, or the person that they live with, it's having steatorrhea, that they can see actually the oily drop, uh, uh, droplets actually in the faucet. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a lot of times patients don't look, so it's hard for them to make the diagnosis even though they have the classical symptoms. And uh, I wanna stress also the point that you just made of making the early diagnosis. By the time that they develop the full-blown fat in the stool, losing weight and so, I think you have lost a lot of time that you could have started enzymes to treat this condition and prevent, as you well mentioned, the bone problem, malnutrition, and symptoms in general. Yeah, and we've really had some good data that's come out in recent years about how many of our patients with chronic pancreatitis, for example, ha have, end up having fractures non-traumatic fractures where they break a bone for no real apparent reason and it's really because the bone health really is affected oftentimes in these patients.